Hello, I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at the Naturalist Beach Resort. This place is home to the early Amerindians who called it Castara, which means falling water. The Naturalist is located close to a waterfall and a rainforest. But this resort is not only a location for holiday makers, it's also used as a wedding venue. We'll take you inside and show you around after we tell you what's happening in our stories this week. June 23rd is Budget Day in Tobago. Increasing internet connectivity for the island through the Fiber to Home project. And a look at Tobago's readiness for the 2014 Atlantic hurricane season. Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Search Mariah at 660-0065 or Search Speyside at 660-6096. Search 24-hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Search Pro, the new face of emergency management. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago, thanks for staying with us. And we're at the Naturalist Beach Resort in Castara, a location that's ideal for nature seekers. At this quiet resort, you can partake in a variety of nature sports, such as hiking, fishing, snorkeling, and bird watching. You also don't have to go far to see turtles and fish, as there are some in the fountain that adorns the entrance to the reception area. There's just so much to see here. And as you contemplate a trip to this place, here's something you definitely want to know of. Monday, June 23rd. Save the date because it's budget day here in Tobago. The Finance and Enterprise Development Secretary will use this opportunity to give the island a glimpse into the package he plans to present to the central government. During his last presentation, he paid particular attention to this island's infrastructural development, agriculture, as well as housing development. He also outlined how the Assembly intended to fund these projects. So as we approach budget 2014-2015, what's in store for us? Odavia Chambers puts the pieces together. The people of Tobago will be kept in mind for the Tobago House of Assembly's budget 2014-2015. The budget will focus on certain issues that have been identified as being important to Tobagonians. The Finance and Enterprise Development Secretary says they were formulated based on a recent survey of the Tobago population in which information was gleaned not just on the economic aspirations but also what measures Tobagonians felt were needed to address their most pressing economic concerns. These include fiscal and corporate governance and ensuring value for money. Funding adequacy in relation to the island's relationship with the central government, diversification of the Tobago economy, and ensuring that people remain at the center of the island's development. Mr. Jack says that the document will keep faith with the Assembly's aspirations for the sustainable development of the island. And if you're wondering how the Assembly plans to deal with the problem of the lack of funding for its developmental plans, well, this is what the Secretary is proposing. In his words, the budget will detail the steps we are taking to address this issue. The budget is being presented against the backdrop of uncertainty in the foreign exchange market, which has peculiar inflationary implications for Tobago, which we will need to address. There's also a period of economic uncertainty if one is to judge by the reports of the World Bank, but also from the business community, both locally and in Trinidad. The 2014-2015 budget is being presented against the background of Tobago's aspirations for full internal self-government. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. Tourists love Tobago because it's laid back and almost quaint. But even with those benefits, there's still the need to stay connected to family and friends wherever they are. And in a world where people are constantly plugged in, there's nothing more frustrating than a slow internet connection or digital service. Tobago wants no part of that. The island is taking steps to improve its connectivity, security and entertainment services. 
Details from Omadara Mills. You can be playing this video game while another family member checks out what's the latest on the internet and another takes a call even as friends watch television. Services which have been made possible through the introduction of fiber optic technology to the island. The Fiber to the Home project is one of Blink B Mobile project geared towards increasing internet connectivity across Trinidad and Tobago. It entails us running fiber optic cable from our exchange directly into the homes of residents. Residents and businesses can also choose to take the security service for peace of mind that your property is safe and the teleconferencing service for those who want to do business abroad or just connect with family. And that's just a few of the benefits of this new kind of connectivity. It would act as a platform for better education, for health care, for commerce, for job opportunities. Um, it would also act as a catalyst for uh, us on the island being able to show our development, our innovation and our social advancement. But before the service is ruled out to all communities on the island, there's a one-month pilot project for 20 residents in the Milford Court area. One of them is Glenda Roberts Henry. And I like the, 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 um, the audio. I, like, I love that. And I love the, the clearness. It is very clear, very pretty. Very pretty, very nice service. After the pilot, the fiber optic connections will be available to the residents in the Crown Point and the Scarborough areas. Then it will be extended to other communities in Tobago. The Tobago House of Assembly endorses the service since it will help in the development of the Assembly's telecommunication programs for the island. I'm Omidar Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. And while we're on the topic of improved services in an economy like Tobago's, driven by tourism, service is everything. What happens on this island doesn't necessarily stay here. One bad customer review on TripAdvisor can be the end of your business. It would help if people felt they had some form of redress, a place where they can lodge complaints, especially when it involves those so-called big businesses. Well, if you didn't know before now, that place does exist right here on this island. But as Kisan Braffitt tells us, they've moved house to offer you an improved service. The doors are now opened at the new location of the Office of the Financial Services Ombudsman. A Tobago office had been in operations before now, but what has changed is that the bank decided to rent a new space. From 2009, we operated out of the accommodations of the Division of Finance in Tobago. Um, and the chief was the one who really spearheaded that drive for the Tobagonian public to have a presence, the office staff a presence for the Tobagonian public. Through this office, Customers can seek redress for problems or complaints from insurance companies, commercial banks, and non-bank financial institutions. So if you have a problem, you don't have to say, well, the bank bigger than me and not taking them, you know, I'm going to just shrug my shoulders. No, no, no. You come to the Financial Services Ombudsman and we assist. We'll be here every, every second Wednesday and four, second and fourth Wednesdays of every month until the traffic picks up where we require to be here longer. What's even better is that... And our services are free of charge. The Office of the Financial Services Ombudsman is located at the top floor Caribana building in Backlet Road, Scarborough. I'm Kisan Brathwaite for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking a break, but do stay with us for details of Tobago's readiness for the 2014 hurricane season.
You're watching Let's Talk Tobago. Thanks for staying with us here at the Naturalist Beach Resort in Castara. Now, did you know that a local from the area, Ansel George, owns and manages this place? Well, he says his own experiences growing up without electricity, vehicles and telephones inspired the look and feel of this resort. Each apartment has a wood finish and carries the name of a fish. But Ansel has struck the perfect balance between rustic charm and comfort. Each room is air-conditioned and fitted with hot and cold water for guests' convenience. And some say it's ideal for relaxing after returning from a trek in the rainforest. Now this sounds great, but much of the beauty Ansel has managed to capitalize on will be lost if the world doesn't pay attention to climate change. At the United Nations, they're particularly worried about small island developing states like Tobago. And it's part of the reason they've designated 2014 as the International Year of Small Island Developing States. The idea is to shine the light on what's being done to address pressing global issues. And there's something that can assist, preparation and knowledge of weather patterns. Here's why. This occurred back in 2005, a disaster that, although didn't directly affect every country, many felt the pain of the Louisiana residents. That was because it was the deadliest and most destructive Atlantic hurricane of the 2005 season, killing close to 2,000 people and destroying over $100 billion worth of infrastructure. Hurricanes are serious, and although Tobago has been spared many times, the island also had its share of a destructive natural disaster dating back to 1963 with Hurricane Flora. But what almost never spares this island is heavy rainfall during the rainy season, which causes severe landslides and flooding. Fast forward to 2014. The Meteorological Services Division, Tobago, is making certain that Tobagonians understand what to expect and are prepared. In total, we should be getting about 70 to 80 percent of the rainfall for any year. The hurricane season, however, is um, the prediction is for slightly below normal. In an area east of us and just north of us, out into the Atlantic, we can see up to about four tropical storms. Right, uh, this, um, that's the prediction. That's what's predicted, but anything can happen. So preparation has to take place. It means, therefore, that the, those persons who are charged with the responsibility of taking care of our network of waterways, ravines, riverines, it means, therefore, that the necessary preparation needs to go in place now. The simple task of removing debris that may have been burnt or shrubs that may have been burnt and get into our waterways needs to be removed. Mr. Stewart says Tobagonians can also prepare by asking themselves certain questions. Knowing exactly what is your risk categories, your levels of vulnerability, what is your exposure? TEMA will also be using its information management system during the hurricane and rainy seasons to notify Tobagonians of any disaster. We introduce what is called a TEMA virtual vision. This is one of the major platforms in information management using a technology called crowdsourcing that TEMA have brought to the table. We are the first in the English-speaking Caribbean to do such. The theme for the season is observing the weather, become a voluntary weather observer. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago has been referred to as Robinson Crusoe's Isle, but its location also made it the island that launched a thousand ships. Well, maybe not a thousand, but you get the gist. Many sunk ships later, a battle still wages on. But this time, the fight is by Tobagonians for greater autonomy. But before a final document is decided on, political organizations, youth groups, businesses, you name it, are being consulted. Aviana Alain tells us what happened when faith-based organizations came together to share their views on the process. That natural beauty of Tobago that attracts thousands to this island every year, it's also part of the island's tourism package, which is a major contributor to the island's economy. It's also on this foundation that many build their case for Tobago to navigate its own affairs. I believe that if internal self-government is granted with no trappings, that we are intelligent enough and resourceful enough to take our way forward. And I'm saying that 
in whatever form or shape, it might not be perfect. We're taking it. And just as Tobagonians rally around various causes, Kay Trotman is asking that they adopt a similar approach for this issue. She believes that a united front will produce positive results. To have a people that is productive and that is ready to engage a self-determined Tobago to the benefit of those who would dwell in its border and who would interact with it. So I'm saying we may need to look at some of those other elements while this process is also happening. And even though it's still a work in progress, some from these faith-based organizations are optimistic that Tobago is on the right track. The process has been ongoing for 40 years. And uh, 40 years is, we're coming out of a wilderness experience. Indeed. So if we were never confident about the process, at this point in time, we should be. He feels the island's confidence will grow when more Tibigonians are educated about how the proposed system is intended to work. I'm Aviana Allen for Let's Talk Tobago. And as we share the views of another sector with you, perhaps it's apt to quote Bob Marley to sum up their contributions. He said, if you know your history, then you'd know where you're coming from. And that statement formed the basis of the financial institution's consultations. The history of Tobago's quest for greater autonomy was put on the table as early as 1977 by the late a &R Robinson. A long, hard fight that continues today as the consultations heard. It is the only island in the Caribbean where the masses of its people have never had any say whatever in the determination of its destiny. So now that they're fully aware of when and how it started, the concerns began to pour in. It's time for us to stop talking about if they give us and if they don't give us how we will survive. We will survive. I would like to see a, 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 a overruling powers I thought probably the president, so if anything that we don't, we don't agree with, it could come and overrule that. Boundaries are important. So is a federal structure and term limits for assemblymen. But others went even further because they're concerned with the secretariat taking the bill on internal self-government for the island to the parliament only for it to be rejected. That fear was allayed. It's a right. Not a wish. That is guaranteed by international law and convention. That is one of the reasons why you actually have in your, in your uh, document two levels. One that is achievable, they believe is achievable in the short term, and another which is the ideal, which will take a little longer. The consultations will continue with various sectors for the entire month of June and will end with mass conferences in July. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take another break, but coming up, celebrating victory for yet another year. A Tobago school wins the Atlantic LNG Primary Schools Cricket Trophy. Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Sit Mariah at 660-0065 or Sit Speyside at 660-6096. Sit 24 hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Sit Pro, the new face of emergency management.
Thanks for staying with us. This is Let's Talk Tobago, and we're at the Naturalist Beach Resort in Castara, a place that has been in operation for the last 17 years. It has grown from a modest five apartments to 12 apartments, some of which are one, two, and three bedrooms, and they're all decorated to maintain that tropical feel. The apartments are also very close to the beach, but if you simply want a view, then the sea is right outside the window. Now we're moving away from the serenity of this resort to the excitement and thrill of a cricket game, one which our young sportsmen again showed they're the best in the country in. The boys of Wim Anglican Primary School won the Atlantic National Primary School's league title, a feat they've pulled off three times in four years. Here's the inside story about their strategies and what it takes to be champions. We knew. In the locker, we knew that we had a golden opportunity to win. But they didn't just know. Another element for the Wim Anlikan Primary School's young cricketers winning the Atlantic LNG National Primary School Cricket League with a score of 172 for six is... They felt that they had to make up for the errors that we, we made last year. You know, hence the reason for some of the comprehensive victories that we had. Right? And they were a bit more ruthless because you know, they cannot underestimate anybody. They can't be complacent against any team. Another part of the team's success over the years is experience. Some of the boys have been on the team for five years. One such player is the man of the match, Joshua James, who helped his team win with 28 runs. Joshua also bowls, so he took two wickets for nine runs. He tells of his experience at this year's finals. This competition this year wasn't hard as it was last year. And the teams we play was easier. Another veteran to this cricket competition is bowler Davian Shangi, who's been on the team since he was six years old. In the finals, Davian was one of the bowlers who took two wickets. He had this bit of advice for young cricketers. By just shading hard and doing your best. The team's bowlers helped with the win by bowling out the Richard Douglas Presbyterian Primary School boys for 38 runs. The Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport continues to support activities like these with the provision of financial support and equipment. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk to Bego. We've seen Lady Gaga wear meat on the red carpet and not everyone was pleased. But here's fashion that will win Tobago points with environmentalists. The designs you're about to see drew inspiration from three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Let's join Betty and Vigar to see what they came up with. The designers use biodegradable materials that are readily discarded. Potato bags, onion bags, and coconut leaves covered in silver dust. And whilst they were displaying fashion, they stuck to the central team. Tell me something about this climate change. We as humans are responsible for emitting carbon dioxide and other gases that warm the earth. So sea level rising, global temperature rising, extreme weather events and ocean acidification is because of climate change. In the evening wear category, Gabriella Waldron's designer, Charlene Gordon, outfitted her in a dress made of newspapers and lined with cotton bedsheets. Her dress was also complemented with a matching handbag. Mariska Thomas's dress entitled Egyptian Princess was designed by her mother Maureen. Her design was made from brown cotton, the fiber from cabbage, and decorated with black pearls. Lexi Marcel modeled an evening dress designed by Lydia Arnold Lawrence that was made from yellow garbage bags. The gown was decorated with seeds and sprinkled with silver dust. At the end of the fashion show, models and their designers were awarded for their creativity by the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment, with the mother and daughter team running away with the prize for the evening wear category. I'm Betty Ann Begart for Let's Talk Tobago. Now to a topic everyone's talking about, even though their country may not be participating. That's the 2014 World Cup. Although Trinidad and Tobago didn't make it to Brazil, back in 2006 they secured a spot in Germany and they did so with the help of their technical director Lincoln Phillips. He's a veteran in the area of football and he has now written a book. Here's the man in his own words about his journey and success. When I was a youngster, people have said that I was a very good goalkeeper. I never ever thought of being, my, of being a great goalkeeper or the best goalkeeper. I never ever thought about that. Okay. I focused on stopping balls. 
And with that determination and drive for excellence, this 73-year-old man became a Hall of Fame goalkeeper, football coach, and an advocate for sport and the importance that it makes to the development of any society. But it's not just his achievements readers can learn about in his biography, Rising Above and Beyond the Crossbar, The Life of Lincoln Tiger Phillips. In his book, he shares what it takes to succeed both on and off the football field. Nobody is going to move you from the status that you what life has given to you. Nobody's going to do that. You have to come forward, okay? And when you get mad, don't get angry. When you get mad, get smart. Mr. Phillips' biography also tells of his support system, something he deems important to his achievements. Anyone who has been successful and believe he or she has done it or can do it by himself or herself, then that person is a fool. You can't do it by yourself. You first of all, your family. Your family is the bedrock, the foundation of your success. At the Tobago leg of the book launch, many praised the former technical director for football for his work in archiving a part of sport history. It is with a sense of gratitude that the Tobago Football Association recognizes the tremendous effort it would have taken for any national to put to paper and to record the achievements of sport in, in Trinidad and Tobago, and more importantly, football, as they say, the people's sport. The Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport received 35 copies of the biography, which will be distributed to all secondary schools on the island, as well as the soon-to-be-opened Scarborough Library. I'm Omidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, our viewers. In Tobago, July is a pretty busy month because it's the beginning of the Heritage Festival, but this year promises to exceed expectations. The organizers say the quality of productions in each village will be improved. The committee's chairman is also appealing to each community to come up with pieces that are sustainable so Tobagonians will be able to see its dancers, drummers and performers year-round. But there's one central idea driving this event. It's the theme. So today we're asking, what does community treasure revelations mean to you? This is what you said. It means the, the knowledge of whatever you, you, you reveal to you from the community, the treasures that you have, now you're able to know more about the community because of what treasures what we feel to you? To me, it means that the community is showing their true heritage or their true treasures to the viewing audience. Reviving, reviving like community, reviving country. But a revolution is look like to me like is most of the time I think it's like a war. It means to me um, what the community has achieved over the years in terms of the history and the culture. Revealing what the community has to offer. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Remember, you can send us your comments or queries on anything you've seen in this program to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Colleen Holder, and on behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. And as we go, we leave you now with some final themes from the Naturalist Beach Resort in Castara. Thank you.